All right. Hi, my name is Vicki Horton Russian, and I'm the cosmetology instructor for Savannah Technical College, and this is Nail Technology, Chapter 8 for Foundations, and this is Theory Part 2. All right, so we're going to continue on talking about uh, being test wise because our goal in cosmetology and nail technology is to get you through, to get you successfully passing the state exam of whatever state you choose to. As long as you know the material, the material doesn't change that much. I mean, they have different books. They have Milady, they have Pivot books, so they have different books, but the material still should allow you to pass no matter what book that you're studying out of, okay? So as we continue on, we're talking about understanding test format. And one of those is deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is actually the process of logic, uh, making logical, reaching logic, logical conclusions by employing logical reasoning. In other words, you're logically gonna look at those answers and just like if you know that answer has nothing to do with what that question is. You can logically say that answers, that's not even an option. So you can cross it off. So you're logically um, making logical conclusions, okay? Just by reasoning, just by reasoning them out. Um, that's not even part of anatomy, so that has nothing to do with the question. Uh, deductive reasoning used as a test taking technique very often leads to better testing results. Uh, regardless of the exam format. So no matter what format it's in, if you logically reason it out, you can come up with a better answer, okay? The best answer. Uh, some strategies associated with deductive reasoning includes these, the following. Eliminate options known to be incorrect. And that's what I was just talking about. When you know something has nothing to do with what that question was, go ahead and mark it off. Don't even look at it. The more incorrect answers you can eliminate, the better your chances are for identifying the correct answer, right? If you have four, if you can get down to two and eliminate two, then you, you've got a 50-50% uh, chance of getting that right, okay? Watch for key words or terms. Look for any qualifying conditions or statements. Keep an eye out for phrases and words such as usually, okay? Because then it would usually have to be right, commonly, in most instances, or never, okay? Never is like never, never. It would have to be never to make that statement true. Or always, then it would have to be always, not sometimes, but always to make that statement true. Study the stem, the stem, the main part of that question, which is the basic question or the problem. It will often provide a clue to the correct answer. Okay, right in the stem. Look for a match between the stem and one of the choices. So is there a match between the stem and one of those choices down there? Watch for grammatical clues. So if you are a grandma wizard, okay, this part can help you. For instance, if the last word in the stem is an, an, the answer must begin with a vowel rather than a consonant. Okay, so for you grammar wizards, that's a tip for you. Look at similar or related questions. They may provide clues. A lot of times we could do that with pen and paper, but on a computer you usually can't backtrack, so you're usually taking one question at a time. When questions include paragraphs, read the entire paragraph and, uh, and questions, okay, let me start that over. When questions include paragraphs to read and questions to answer, read the questions first. This will help you identify the important information as you read the paragraph. Okay, it's almost like also I sometimes just look at the multiple choice and then I read the question. So either way, but just make sure you read everything thoroughly. That's really important. All right, um, work as a class to create. Okay, here is a class project. So for those that weren't on class time, let me see what we can do. All right, well, you're going to do a, a list of um, your personal strengths and weaknesses. So just make sure that that's one of the things that you do is a list of personal strengths and weaknesses. Things that you do well already and things that you're working on doing well within your nail technology field. 
All right, after completing the school curriculum, examination candidates should be com uh, competent in their technical skills and ready for state board practical exams. So make a list of technical skills that you need, and there should be um, something in the book uh, for technical skills. Just kind of look up technical skills in your book or even look for one online for nail technology and just kind of use that as a uh, chart for you. And then you can upload that in the theory two box. You can, um, although performance criteria for practical examinations vary from state to state, these are basic skills or procedures that are usually evaluated for each discipline. You can bet infection control is in that list. Review your state board rules and candidate information literature for details about what you will be tested on on your practical exam. So um, that's another thing that you can do is go to the State Board of Georgia um, Cosmetology Licensing website and look up the candidate information and see what parts you're going to be tested on. Okay, and you can upload that in the theory exam also. Practical exams require a different approach than written exams. After all, performing services is what your license is for, and practical exams are the best way to evaluate a person's technical competency. So first you're learning the material. You're learning uh, you know, about the acrylic, about the gel nails. You're, you're going to learn about disinfection. You're going to learn about anatomy. You're going to learn about all that because then you're going to be performing massages. You're going to be performing a sculpture nail. You're going to be performing a tip overlay. Um, so you'll be going over all this. Basic preparation for practical exams should always include practice on the model that you will be taking to the examination to feel confident about performance. You must be familiar with the model's hair, skin, and nails, and you'll have a mannequin hand and the service that you will be performing. This preparation will help eliminate some nervousness and stress during your practical exam. So if you're using your same um, kit and you're practicing the same mock examination that you're going to do at State Board, it should be like clockwork every time you get there and you will don't don't stress you're going to be able to practice over and over your practical exam for state board in order to better be prepared for the practical portion of the examination follow these tips these are the tips practice the correct skills required in the test as often as you can participate in mock licensing examinations Com complete with time sections and we will do that over and over at the college before you go to uh, state board so don't worry you're going to have plenty of those. Familiarize. Familiarize yourself with the content contained in the examination bulletin sent by the licensing agency. Make a list of equipment and implements you are expected to bring to examination. All that's going to be covered by your instructor that starts you when she prepares you for your mock exams. She's going to help you with that list. She's going to help you uh, do your bags one day before you go through the mock. So everything's going to be step by step. By the time you get to the end of this, you're going to know how to do everything. If allowed by the regulatory or licensing agency, observe a practical examination prior to taking yours. You're going to do so many over and over, you're not going to have to worry about observing somebody else's. As with any exam, listen carefully to the examiner's instructions and follow them explicitly. Okay, so when you're doing a practical exam, guys, the most important thing is just to listen to the examiner as they give you directions. And you, you can do that, uh, practice that by doing that with your instructor at school. When they give you a mock exam, don't say, oh my gosh, we're gonna do this mock exam again. No, this is in preparation for your final exam at state. And if you can't pass it at the college, you, they won't pass you, so you don't have to worry. If you pass it at Savannah Tech, you are gonna pass it when you go to state. But listen to your instructors. Even if you've heard them over and over, focus, be disciplined, know that this is only for a season and then you have your own license, okay? Uh, focus on your own knowledge and do not allow yourself to be concerned with what other test candidates are doing. Do that within school. Know what you're doing. Don't worry about everybody else. Follow all infection control and safety procedures throughout the entire examination. 
look the part, neat, clean, and professionally. And you can start that right as you go to school. Be neat and clean. Um, I, I go back to work tomorrow. Today is a holiday for me. I go back to work tomorrow. Um, I'll be washing all my clothes, making sure everything's ironed and ready so that I look nice when I go to work tomorrow. Okay, and so, and you have to do that when you go to school. If you don't start the discipline now, you won't do it later. You say, well, I have so many things to do. Everybody has so many things to do. People have kids and a job and they go to school and, and if they don't have that, then they're taking care of their parents and they're doing this and they're doing that. If they don't have that, then they're in school and they're doing this and they're doing that. I'm telling you, everyone's busy. Everyone's busy, I promise you. Very few people are not busy. But the whole thing is, is make that little bit of extra time. Be disciplined, use time management. Um, you know, I wash my clothes once a week. That means I have outfits for every day. And I just do that. I even change my purse with every outfit. My husband, I drive him insane. But, and the only way I can do that is by being very organized. Okay, very organized. As soon as students know the date and time of their exams, have them add it to their phone or calendar apps or their paper planners. You should have some kind of something that's, you know, I have, I have, uh, I don't know if you can see the charts from there, but I have, I have a calendar here and I have a calendar on my phone. So, um, most exam sites require you to arrive 15 to 30 minutes prior. So have them build that time in. Don't forget to add an alarm or three. So if you have a hard time waking up, have somebody wake you up that morning, whatever it takes. Have them make some important notes on the events as, as well. Required prior arrival time, exam site address, directions to the site. Okay, make sure you have your kit and everything in it. And if you're gonna spend a night somewhere, have your hotel, the name, phone number, reservation, confirmation number, and cost. Everything they will need to bring with them. Practical kit, your ID, okay, everything. Have it written down what you need. Um, for me, I, would, I love those little notebooks. I don't know if I've showed y'all before, but I love little note, notepads of any kind. I love little notepads. I just, I love notepads. I have a million notepads and I have one notepad for everything. So, I mean, I love my notepads. Test why students have a planned, realistic study schedule. They read content carefully and become active studiers. They keep an organized notebook, develop a vocabulary list, review handouts, pass quizzes and tests, and listen for clues and cues in class. That's what test why students do. Okay, very important. All right, discover potential employers. How do we do this? Well, when you choose to enter your field, your primary goal was to find a good job after being licensed. All right, that is the primary goal. I'm sure there's other goals for getting your license. Now you need to narrow the goal into reality by answering a number of important questions. All right, and so for, for all of you that didn't come to class time, answer these questions. What do you really want out of your career in the beauty industry? This is question one. Question two, what particular areas within the industry are most interesting to you? Three, what are the strongest practical skills that you have? And four, in what ways do you wish to use these skills? Five, what clientele do you want to work with what level of style do they demand? Six. Where do you want to work, geographically speaking? What part of the world, nation, or city? Downtown or suburbs? Okay? And these questions are going to help you to kind of, you know, specify what your goal and provide guidance for your future. Toward what, where, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? And you may not know where you want to be, but this is a good time to begin to think about it. Okay? Begin to think about it. All right. I like that. De develop your enthusiasm. Okay? You need to be enthusiastic. People like enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, I believe, is contagious. All right? And you need to network. You never know. That's why I say be nice to everybody that you're in school with because you never know. The worst student... I mean, the one that seems like they just can't get anything right. They have a hard time with all their nails. I mean, they just, everything's, I couldn't even do a nail design when I started. I mean, I, everybody was, I couldn't even do a nail design. But listen, someday you may need a job from them. Network now. A friend shows himself friendly. Make as many friends as you can within this industry. I promise you, this industry goes around and comes around. Somebody may give you a job someday. 
I know people right now that are working on um, on uh, uh, with movie stars on sets doing makeup and hair all because they knew somebody okay a lot of times you don't get in just because you get in you get in because somebody mentioned you or because somebody had you come help them one time and then the crew director liked you so whatever but networking is very important so during your training you may have the opportunity to network with various industry professionals who are invited to a school as guest speakers okay network 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 be prepared to ask them questions about what they like least and most in their current positions, ask them for any tips they might have that will assist you in the search for the right salon, spa, and barbershop. In addition, be sure to take advantage of your institution in-house placement assistant program, if available when you begin your employment search. Your willingness to work hard is a key ingredient to your success it is. People don't want people that don't work um, or just sit around. You know when they're not busy do something there's always something to clean or be watching videos be doing something to further your career get a mannequin work on some styles work on some hairstyles some updos having enthusiasm for getting the job done can be contagious and when um, whenever everyone works hard everyone benefits and that's true even in a salon you can begin to develop this enthusiasm by establishing good work habits as a student so help one another when you're in class guys all right a shop survey this has three points one is small independent shops two is independent chains and three is large national change okay and that's where we're going to stop for today all right so make sure that you answer those questions from before and then I also want you to um, go ahead and do a research of the different kinds of shops that there are okay Make sure you upload all three of those things that I gave you during this portion, Class 2 Theory.